Matt, congratulations on securing the runner-up position and being a fantastic representative for the deaf community. How are you feeling this morning? Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I feel good, you know, after 100 days, finally be out in the open world again. Uh, slowly adapted to that. Um, but it was a good 100 days, and I'm proud of what I've done. Many fans believed you could secure the win if you made the final two. Why do you think the jury didn't lean in your favor? Um, I think what America saw probably was my social game. I think jury maybe didn't see that aspect. You know, there's a lot of things you see and you don't see. Um, I think with this year's jury, it was focused on maybe more physical competitiveness. And Jack had that. Uh, for me, I played a major social game. And I think with this year's jury, they weren't focused on the jury. Uh, the social aspect as much. Jack ultimately brought you to the final two, but that was not always his plan, considering he almost evicted you at the final four. If he had gone through with evicting you, would you have regretted using the power of invincibility to save him? Um, yeah, I go back and forth with that question. Um, I think ultimately me using that power on anyone regardless kind of showed what my characteristics and traits. You know, I was playing this game to be a loyal and a team worker, and I'm so glad that I used that power for myself and someone else rather than being selfish and not using it. Um, that was the kind of game I wanted to play was being a team player. So, yeah, it would have been a little salty, obviously, if Jag had booted me at Final Four. Um, but if he was sitting maybe toward uh, the end, Final Two, with Bowie, I still would have given Jag my vote uh, because he played a great game the whole way where Bowie played a good game towards the end. As the first Deaf House guest on Big Brother, how do you feel that the producers did accommodating your disability and which house guests were the most supportive in adapting to your needs? Yeah, um, being the first Deaf person in the game was a big task and I'm proud to be the first one to do that and I'm glad I did that and I think I represented well. Um, a lot of the house guests accommodated very well. Um, it took me a while to open up to everyone in the house um, just because I can't have those, you know, big group conversation. So once I got this one-on-one -on -one conversation, I was able to open up. And once I had that, each individual house guest was able to accommodate and know how I work and was always there supporting for me. Sari and you shared a close relationship in the house. After winning HOH at the final five, you promised Sari safety only to nominate her less than 24 hours later. What led to this change and what was your thought process behind this promise? I definitely love Suri. Uh, I was working very close with her. I wanted to take her very far in the game. You know, ultimately I was playing a game of being safe and making sure I was on, I was good with everyone, each individual person. You know, I had to tell people what they wanted to hear. Uh, so my strategy was just pleasing everyone in this house, basically. And to please Bowie and Jag, who are the people that are voting, I didn't want to piss them off. So I had to go along with their plan. But obviously my plan was to get Flish out and not Suri because I had that promise with Suri. You provided a unique answer when Julie asked you about the secret relatives in the house, suggesting America and Corey. Given that Corey and America were in a showmance, are now a couple, what led you to believe they were the secret relatives, and what do you think their relation was? I mean, I say things off the bat randomly like that. You know, I think that's kind of my humor sometimes. Uh, you know, I said that, and then I, like, took it back after a couple seconds. I was like, wait, that kind of sounds wrong because they were in a showmance. Um, I... It was a question I was never expecting, to be honest. Like, I had no idea if someone kept that from a secret. And when I found out that it was Jared and Suri, it blew my mind. Who, who did you think that it could be if it wasn't, obviously, Corey in America? Wait, what was the question again? Sorry. Who did you think that the secret relatives could be if it wasn't, obviously, Corey in America? Oh, uh, I was going to say Felicia and Jared. Hmm. You expressed some strong opinions about Corey and America, even going so far to suggest that Corey might propose to America on finale night to outdo you and Riley after you received Riley's letter. What specifically about America rubbed you the wrong way and what contributed to your critical views on their connection? Uh, I mean, I just joke around a lot and I think that's what people misinterpreted. Uh, I just, you know, I'm like that. Uh, I never meant anything and bad intentions or malicious uh so i didn't realize i was doing anything bad like that i just joke like that all the time with my my friends and obviously i was living in the house guests so i kind of got very comfortable with them and i was just making jokes jag bowie and yourself devised a plan at the final five known as the pressure cracker 
to provoke Felicia and see how she'd react under pressure during the HOH. You even jokingly mentioned that you'd tell Felicia to suck your finger if she stay in the game. What led you to believe such, making such a comment was necessary in the context of the plan? I, wait, I told Felicia to suck my fingers? Yeah, you said that you you were you and you guys were coming up with what you wanted to say to them to tell them to stay in the game. So you jokingly said that you would tell Felicia to suck your fingers. I honestly don't remember saying that at all. Uh, but if I did, I apologize for that. Uh, I never remember saying anything like that. I never. I was talking about the pressure cooker a lot for sure. Uh, but I never knew I made a comment like that. Riley played a significant role in your game. How did your strategy strategy change after she left the game? Yeah, Riley kind of introduced me to a lot of kind of playing the game. You know, I went into it kind of just very open-minded, but she was playing the game, being smart and stuff, and having connections with everyone. And she kind of gave that pathway for me, you know, with Sari and everyone else in the house guests. You know, I never really got close with anyone that fast. And Everyone else is already getting close, but with Riley, she kind of helped that start for me because I think me being loyal to her showed everyone that I was a loyal person in this house. So we were talking about Riley. So looking towards the future, what do you envision for you and Riley? Uh, yeah, me and Riley, obviously, we're talking a lot those first 16 days. And I think we'll continue from there now that I'm outside the house. And you had mentioned after you got her letter that you have a girlfriend. So is, is that true? I guess so. It looks like that. Yep, definitely. So, Matt, I want to express my appreciation for your insights and perspectives, especially being a trailblazer for the deaf community. Thank you for sharing your experiences with me, Matt, and congratulations on a remarkable journey. Appreciate that so much. I appreciate all those uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you.